In this video, I will show you how to create game objects with components assigned and set up, so it's as easy as this. So let me start by walking you through the component. You see, I have this new component that I've created for this demo called Zone, and Zone uses a collider set to a trigger and has a layer called Zone, which is set in the project to react with the layer character. Basically, a character walks into a zone and something happens, but we don't care about what happens. We care about how we're creating it. So I create a game object and Unity immediately allows me to change the name. Let's use Dynamic Zone A as our name. Now, because I was a good developer, I set the attribute require component to require a collider because all zones require a collider. That means I need to add a collider before my script, because if I drag the script onto the game object, I get told off by Unity. So I add a box collider, and now I can drag and drop, or because I was a good developer, I added the add component menu attribute, and now I can simply click the add component button and search or drop down to where it's at. But that's not it. I still need to set the layers and make sure the collider is set to trigger. Now, how many clicks did I press? And guess what? I'm going to do so many more of these zones across this scene. And I will probably forget to set something up correctly, like the layer or setting the box collider to trigger. Let's make the situation worse. The zone now also requires an audio source to play for some relevant game reason I just made up. Let's add it as another required type to our component. Now, because an audio source is not an abstract class like the collider, when I now add the zone, it will auto add the audio source. And because I get it in the reset method to auto fill my field, it's all good. But I still need to set the play on awake to disabled because I don't need all my zones playing the audio as soon as the game starts up. Now, let's make sure we're tidy. We're going to drag that zone to be the very top component of this game object. It's the most important one, and it's the one we're probably going to be editing the most. Now, we're doing way too much work. And remember, at the beginning of the video, the example I showed was pretty seamless. So let's create that example. We'll create a static script for our component called Zone Menu with a menu item called Create Zone. Now, I would usually put this menu code in a custom editor for the zone component, but as we don't have a custom editor right now, I'm just going to stick it in this static class. Now, notice the path on the menu. It's quite important. It starts with game object, and that's how you enter menu items into the right click on the hierarchy window. Now, in our menu, let's create a game object and set its layer. We won't know ahead of time if we want a box or sphere collider. So let's ask the user to decide with a handy little dialogue. We will then add the collider and set it to trigger. Then let's add our audio source and untick the play on awake. And now let's finally add the zone. If we run that in Unity, it pretty much does what we want. But wait, there's more to do. You see, the zone is the most important component, as I said earlier. So we're going to want to move that all the way to the top. And we'll do that by using Unity Editor Internal, Component Utility, Move Component Up. And we're going to wrap this in a while loop so it goes all the way to the top. Because if we don't, it's basically just going to move up one step. Now, having it at the top will work with our new pretty hierarchy and show the nice icon of the zone. And if you're interested in that hierarchy, you can actually check that out on another video I have on this channel. Now. Are we done? Well, no, we're not. If we have a parent transform selected in the scene, we want to make sure it's added as a child. At the moment, it just adds it at the root. So we will need the following code and we'll want to zero the transform. So there's no need for our zone to be created miles away from our selection. Finally, we want to make sure the active selection is the game object we just created. We don't want to have to reselect it. And are we done? No, we're perfectionists. We must win the war and we're not there yet. I want to register this new game object in the undo queue in case I was mistaken when creating it. I don't want to have to select it, then press delete. Undo is always better. And as tools programmers, we should always strive to make sure 
any scene changes we make from our tools, they're undoable. Now, this is the last item, the icing on the cake. Notice how when I create a game object, I can immediately rename it. It's kind of handy, right? And there's no need to reselect it or in the menu, press on the rename option. Now, Unity doesn't make this one obvious. You see, you need to send a rename event to the hierarchy window. So first we need to get that window and then send the command event using the editor GUI utility dot command event rename. However, this won't work as it's because the rename will get lost in the creation code. We need to delay this rename. And luckily there is a handy bit of code called editor application delay call. And we can use this to make sure that this rename gets called after the creation code is finished. And that's it. Now we can create our game object with the correct layer, set up all the components with their various options, make sure the relevant components at the top, make it all undoable, and even get it to rename immediately. Now that is efficient if ever I saw it.